Question 1. Outline three reasons for reviewing a risk assessment. Answer. Three reasons for reviewing the risk assessment are, conditions change as a result of the introduction of new machinery, processes, or hazards. There may be new information on hazardous substances or new legislation, changes in the workforce such as introduction of trainees. Significant changes have taken place since the last assessment was done. An accident or incident or a series of minor ones provides a good reason for review. Question 2. Outline factors that an employer should take into account when selecting individuals to assist in carrying out a risk assessment. Individuals' competence, experience, and training in hazard identification and in carrying out risk assessments. Their experience of the process or activity carried in the workplace. Plant and equipment knowledge. Ability to understand and interpret regulations, standards, and guidance. Communication and reporting skills. An awareness of their own limitations. Attitude and commitment to the task. The views of their immediate supervisor should be sought before they are selected as team members. Question 3. Identify factors that may place young persons at a greater risk from workplace hazards. Lack of knowledge, experience, and awareness of risk in the workplace. They tend to be subject to peer pressure and behave in a boisterous manner. Their willingness to work hard and want to please their supervisor and can become over-enthusiastic and this can lead to the taking of risks without the realization of the consequences. Underdeveloped communication skills and a limited attention span, their physical strength and capabilities may not be fully developed and so they may be more vulnerable to injury when manually handling equipment and materials. They are also more susceptible to physical agents, biological and chemical agents such as temperature extremes, noise, vibration, radiation, and hazardous substances. Question 4. Outline the actions that an employer may take when a risk to a new or expectant mother cannot be avoided. Working conditions or hours must be altered. An adaption of her conditions of work, if above is not feasible, a transfer to another post, without loss of pay, when such as an adaption is not feasible, or paid leave, in accordance with national laws, regulations, or practice when such a transfer is not feasible. Question 5. With respect to the management of risk within the workplace. Explain the meaning of the term hierarchy of control. The general hierarchy of control represents the detailed application of the management strategy identified in the principles of prevention and is used specifically in the risk assessment process to decide on the most effective measures in a particular situation. Control shall be implemented in this order. Elimination of the risk, reduce the risk by substitution, isolate the people from the hazard, engineering control administrative control, personal protective equipment. Question 6. Outline, with examples, the standard hierarchy that should be applied with respect to controlling health and safety risks in the workplace. Eliminating the risk, once the hazard has been eliminated the potential for harm has gone. Example, disconnection the electric power line. Substitute the risk, substitute a hazard work practice with a less hazardous one. Example, using an induced collapse technique in place of people working at height for demolisher a building. Isolating the risk, isolate the hazard from people this method has its problems in that the hazard has not been removed. Example, electrical switches, engineering control. The provision of mechanical aids, barriers, machine guarding, ventilation or insulation to isolate a hazard from employees. Example, 
providing lockout tagout in power sources to avoid electric shock. Administrative control, establishing policies, procedures, and work practices designed to reduce a worker exposure to a risk. It can also include the provision of specific training and supervision. Example. Providing alternative tasks for workers so as not prevent continuous keyboard work for long periods. Personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment are used when all other control methods are impractical or to increase control. Question 7. An organization is introducing a new work activity that requires a safe system of work. Explain. Why it is important to involve workers in the development of a safe system of work. It is important to involve workers in the development of a safe system of work because of their knowledge of the particular working environment involved and what will work in practice. Their involvement will establish their ownership of the system and will encourage them to use and follow it once it has been finalized and introduced. Their involvement will emphasize management's commitment to health and safety and help to raise its profile within the organization. Question 8. Explain why it is important to develop workplace procedures to enable the safe evacuation of employees during an emergency. Workplace procedures should be developed and set in motion in order to minimize the damage to the employee during an emergency. Employers would need to introduce procedures to satisfy their duty of care to employees and others who might be affected. Question 9. Outline the factor to consider when making an assessment of first aid provision in a workplace. The size of the organization and number of employees. The layout of the workplace. The identified hazards and risks. The distance from the workplace to the nearest source of emergency medical services. Working patterns such as leave and shift working. The need in some circumstances to train first aid personnel in special procedures. Question 10. Outline why visitors to a workplace should be informed of an organization's emergency procedures. They can act appropriately in the event of an emergency thereby minimizing the risk to themselves as well as to other persons. The provision of such information will assist the employer in complying with the requirements of the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 that relate to ensuring the safety of persons other than employees working on the premises. The general duty owed to persons other than employees under Section 3 of the Hasway is also of relevance as is the employer's common law duty of care. Visitors are not aware of the workplace processes or activities. They don't know the hazards associate with workplace activities. They don't know about emergency escape route.